Hello and welcome to this edition of We Are Wednesdays, when we take a closer look at work in the Samuel E. Weir collection at Riverbrink Art Museum. My name is Deborah Antonsik, and I'm the director curator at Riverbrink. Today, as we near the end of June and the celebration of Indigenous History Month in Canada, I've selected this self-portrait by an Indigenous artist working in a Western idiom of paint on canvas. It is one of the very few works by an Indigenous artist in the Weir collection. The self-portrait by Zachary Vincent was purchased by Sam Weir in 1968. In the self-portrait, the artist looks directly at the viewer. His features are fixed in a stern outward gaze. His brow is slightly furrowed. He is shown wearing a large silver disc around his neck and also a medal known as an Indian medal with the image of Queen Victoria. He wears a wampum belt across his chest and a silver armband on his right arm, which holds a ceremonial peace pipe. A portrait of a child is included in the lower right. In profile, his gaze directed upward. Vincent was born in 1815 in the Huron-Wendat village of Chenlorette, just north of Quebec City. Here I'm showing a view of Lorette by Frederick Lewis after George Harriet's illustrated book, Travels Through the Canadas, printed in 1807, which we have in the Weir collection. Today, today this is the Wendaki Reserve. Vincent was the son of Chief Gabriel Vincent and Marie Otis and the nephew of Grand Chief Nicholas Vincent. Any formal instruction he may have received is unknown, but he was credited with a facility in drawing and painting from an early age. Vincent was inspired to take up painting by the experience of having his own portrait painted in 1838 at the age of 23. The portrait titled The Last of the Hurons, Zachary Vincent, is by Antoine Plamondon, the leading portrait painter in Quebec City, following the artist's return from study in Paris in 1830. The portrait is now in the National Gallery of Canada collection, a gift of the Schaefer family. The painting was Plamondon's submission to a competition launched by the Literary and Historical Society of Quebec. The competition was for, quote, an original oil painting on a historical or other theme, end quote. In the three-quarter standing portrait, Vincent's dress, the wool blanket coat and sash, the ceinture fleche, and a silver disc at its throat, worn over a Western-style shirt collar, all of these combine European and Indigenous elements. His gaze is directed upward to the left, centered somewhere off in the distance. On the right, a red and orange glow on the horizon suggests a sunset. Flamondon has imbued the portrait with a sensibility typical of Romanticism, a period style of the late 18th and early 19th centuries in Europe, which emphasized emotion and individuality. It was also characterized by a glorification of the past and of nature as a lost garden of Eden. As art historian Francois-Marc Gagnon has argued, at the time this portrait was completed, the painting would have been seen as allegorical, an expression of the presumed loss of indigenous peoples, the survival, <clears throat> sorry, the sunset in the background, the, the title, The Last of the Hurons, and by extension, The End of the French Presence in Canada. After the competition, the painting was purchased by Lord Durham, a British colonial administrator, Governor General of British North America, and the nominal author of the Durham Report, in which he advocated for the joining of Upper and Lower Canada and, more controversially, the assimilation of French Canadians following the 1837 rebellion. Although it remained in Britain for the next 150 years, the portrait inspired much praise and many accolades. It was the inspiration for Le Dernier Huron, a poem by historian Francois Xavier Garneau in 1840. And as mentioned, the experience is thought to have prompted Vincent to take up painting. In addition to complete, completing some 10 versions of his self-portrait, 
with his son Cyprian, Vincent painted landscapes, genre scenes, and depictions of historical subjects and Huron myths and legends. And here I'm showing you the version of the self-portrait in the Musée de Beaux-Arts de Québec. In the self-portrait in the Weir collection, Cyprien is shown in profile, looking up at his father. He also wears a round disc and holds a bow and arrow, attributes of Indigenous identity. But the scale is out of proportion, despite the careful attention to details of dress, such as the medallion and the disc and the wampum, there is no formal connection between the two subjects. It's difficult to read the work as a realistic portrait of a father and son, but it, func it functions more on a symbolic level. The boy is less a person linked formally to his father than a reference to the idea of continuity. The painting was purchased by Sam Weir at a Christie's auction in Montreal in 18, 1968. We have no information as to why Weir was interested in acquiring the painting. Um, and he did some at times in his writing, um, in his letters, mention his wish for either an art museum to be founded in Queenston or a museum of Canadiana. So perhaps uh, that this portrait would have fit into that idea. And certainly the depth of information about the, the artist, about both the artist and the complex history of Indigenous settler relations that we are aware of today would not have been available to Weir at the time. The work was one of several items offered for sale from the collection of the Literary and Historical Society of Quebec. As art historian Louise Vignon has argued in her book, Zachary Vincent, Life and Work, published by Art Canada Institute, Vincent's self-portrait provided the opportunity to assert that his own line was not dying out. And it can therefore be seen as a conscious response to predictions of the disappearance of the Huron people. It's also a rare example of self-representation, an artist who was able to counter the image of Indigenous peoples as exotic, frozen in time, and doomed to extinction. Thank you for joining this session and look forward to our next outing for We're Wednesday. Thank you.